Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and welcome to the Gaming Rules video log for the month of August 2019, sort of. Yet again, for the third or fourth month running, uh, I'm, I'm late on these, I'm two weeks late, so this video log is actually being recorded on the 15th of September, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover everything that I have done since the last video log. So, this log is covering everything that I've done since the 20th of August, right through to today, which is the 15th of September, although you're not going to find out what I'm doing later on today. That'll be next month's video log. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters that make these video logs possible. And thank you very much to everybody who watches them, who is either a Patreon supporter or not, and comments on them and, and likes them. I like, I like doing them. I like carrying on doing them. And obviously, clearly, people like watching them. Um, so yeah, apologies for the delay. I am really going to try next month to do it earlier. The reason I didn't do it this month, I actually had it in my calendar for the start of September. I had a day booked out for it because I have to plan it, prep it, go through all the games that I've played, work out what I'm going to say and everything else. Um, it does take a while to put together. Unfortunately, my workload this month has been extremely excessive and some of them had deadlines and the, the work had to come first. So I'm taking some time out this weekend. It's currently Sunday. Um, I should be doing house jobs, but you know, let's do this instead. Right, let's crack on. Games that I've played. Let's go through them first. The first one is... Reavers of Midgard, and I'm not actually going to talk too much about this game right now because my Patreon supporters voted it as one of the two games that I would review in August, and I've done that. The review is up there on the channel now, so if you want to find out what I think about it in like 15 minutes or so, then there is a review on my channel. What I will tell you though is that I've played it twice. The first time I played it four player, uh, Rick taught me how to play, Rick learned how to play from the rule book and then taught us how to play. Alex from Grey Fox Games was on hand, so we had a couple of rules questions that he helped us out with. Um, we enjoyed it. I then played it again three player, and the second time I played it, I streamed it. So uh, if you're just watching this video log and you haven't seen the news recently, uh, my news anyway, is that I'm now live streaming. I'm now able to do live streaming. So I did a live stream where I taught Rob and Emily how to play and we played a three player game. And that video is on the channel right now. So if you wanna watch a review, that's there. If you wanna watch me teaching the game, that's there. And if you wanna watch uh, us playing through a three player game of it, that's there as well. So all of that is on the channel. You can find out everything that I think about Reavers of Midgard there. Next up is Watergate. Um, I've played Watergate twice. Now, Watergate is a two-player game designed by Matthias Kramer, uh, published by Capstone Games and Frosted Games, and I've played it twice. Um, and it's really good. I've not, I'm not planning to do a review video of the game at the moment, so I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, I did put it up there for my Patreon supporters to vote on uh, as one of the games that potentially I would review, but other games got more votes, although Watergate did get a lot of votes. So it is a two-player game. It's based on the Watergate scandal. One player is playing Nixon and he's trying to get re-elected and gain the momentum and everything else, and the other player is the journalist that are trying to piece together information um, to link Nixon to two of the things on the outside. Um, I'll show an image of, of, of the game board here, but basically what you're trying to do as the reporters is you're trying to yeah, make links of face-up counters that, that link two of the people on the outside to Nixon in the middle. It, some people have described it a little bit like Twilight Struggle. It's a card-driven game. It's a card-driven two-player game set in something that happened in history, but it's a lot simpler than Twilight Struggle, and a game will take you about 20 or 30 minutes. I really enjoy it. I've got there's, there's something about the Watergate scandal that fascinates me. Um, and since then, I've gone on to be, start reading uh, lots of articles about it. In fact, the back of the rule book is fantastic. There is so much information about what actually happened, which is not needed for the game itself, but it provides you this historical background to everything. Uh, the rules are good. The gameplay is good. Really like it. Um, and I think I've played it. I think, I think I've played it twice. For some reason, I think I've played it three times. Um, but yeah. I've only recorded two plays on BGG. Um, the reporters have won twice, and I think Nixon won twice. The victory conditions are slightly different, but the way that it works is that you play cards. Cards have two different effects. Some cards are one-off only, and they go out of the game, and other ones, they do something, and they cycle round. It's just really good. Go and check it out. If you like two-player-driven games, if you have a bit of a thing for the Watergate scandal, like a, you know, an in interest in it, um, then, yeah, go and check that out, Water uh, Watergate. Right, next up is Ragusa. And, and Ragusa is one of the games that I'm going to be reviewing this month. So I'm only going to give you a short summary of it here, but I am going to be doing a full review of it uh, later this month. 
The first time I played Ragusa was live on camera. Now that I can do live streaming, I basically did an unboxing video, a Paul learns how to play the game from the rulebook, and then plays through the solo game. Uh, thankfully, the designer and uh, Lewis from Braincrack Games were available while I was doing the live stream, so they helped me out with a couple of things, although the rulebook was pretty good. Uh, there was just a couple of queries that I had. So yeah, if you want to see me learning a game from the rulebook, which some people said they really liked that. I've, I've done a couple of them before. People said they were good, so I've done more of them. Um, and then I play through the solo game, and the solo game is really interesting. But I've been pretty desperate to play the multiplayer game because it's a very different experience. Um, in the solo game, you start with three buildings on the board and you start with a base production value that allows you to pretty much do what you want. In the multiplayer game, you start with nothing. So you have lots of choices at the start of the game. Although one criticism that some people have is it's fairly scripted at the start. You need to get some wood and stone at the start, and you do, but you still have choices of where you go. Um, and yesterday, round at a friend's house, I've played a five-player game of Ragusa. So I've played it at one, and I've played it at five. Um, I do really want to play it you know, a couple of times at other player counts, and I probably need to play it before I do a review of it. So I'm going to try and fit that in over the next couple of weeks. And yeah, there'll be a review of Ragusa going live on my channel sometime. Uh, next up is Copenhagen. Copenhagen is from Queen Games. It came out this year. Um, it's, it's, it's a Tetris style, you know, tile sort of laying game, but you imagine that it's a bit like Tetris. Uh, that's how it was described to me. It's a very light family weight game, but it's really simple rules. And it only takes 30, 40 minutes to play at most. Uh, right now, Copenhagen is my number one gateway game that I would use with non-gamers. Um, it's really good. Uh, I really enjoy it, and despite it being light and with not many rules, there are different strategies that you can take. Um, and this is, surprise is probably the wrong word. It, it's one thing that I, I liked about the game, even though it is light and fairly simple. You can learn, oh, we can go with a window strategy, or we can go with a special ability card strategy, or you can go with this kind of strategy. There are different options that you can have. It isn't just everybody does the same thing and then eventually somebody wins. So it, it's good that the game's got that. Um, I've got the normal version of the game, there is a deluxe version of the game, and there's a roll and write version of the game, which isn't out yet, but is coming out soon. Because, um, you know, roll and write is, is the thing. But yeah, Copenhagen, I very much enjoy it. Uh, and one of the questions that I had from somebody was that, you know, they were interested in my opinion on the game, because I like much heavier games. Medium to heavy Euro games is my thing, so what did I think of, of, of Copenhagen? And as I say, if you go into it expecting that this is actually a light, family-friendly gateway game, um, but, you know, I've played it a few times and, uh, yeah, really enjoy it. So that's Copenhagen. Next, Undo. Let's talk about this. So, <laughs> many of the games that I've played this month have been really good, really enjoyed them. This one's not. I have played one of the previous Undo's, uh, Cherry Blossom Festival, and I think I spoke about it on a previous video log, either last month or the month before. Really didn't like it, really didn't get on with it. There's three of them in the series. Why have I played another one? Well, I wanted to make sure. I wanted to confirm what I thought. I wanted to give it another chance. I wanted to try a different scenario, uh, just to see if it was the scenario that was, that was the problem. Uh, and me and Vicky sat down to play it. It was even worse than the first one. Um, I mean, I'm not... I don't like slating games. And there are people out there who have enjoyed this game. I know people that have enjoyed this game, but for me, no. We made nine semi-random decisions in the game. You make a decision, you then flip over a card to get, and it gives you a number. Uh, quite often, there's no experience, quite often, I say semi-random decisions. We weren't making completely random decisions and we did talk about it. You know, we did, oh, what's this? And we've got the decision of, do we, do we do this? And do we do this or do we do this? And we thought about it and we thought, mm, what impact is that gonna have on the timeline? Cause you kind of time travel as in you're trying to prevent somebody from dying and you can go back at various points in time. You witness certain things that can happen and you can manipulate the events, which sounds really cool, except the timeline is fixed. You, you go back and you prevent something from happening and you flip over a card and it'll be like, it's a plus two. And sometimes you make a decision and you turn over the card and it's like it's a minus one. And you're like, oh, well, that's bad. Why is it a minus one? We don't know. There's no explanation of it. 
Um, so we really did try. We didn't just, you know, fly through it and just, ah, we don't care about this. We actually did try. We talked about it. We tried to understand the story. We talked about the decisions, uh, what we were going to make, and then we flipped a card over and it gives you a number. But it doesn't have any impact on the timeline. So you go back and prevent something from happening and you get the plus two card. You haven't actually prevented it from happening. And at the end of the game, you add up the numbers and you check your score. And that's it. And, you know, we scored enough that we sort of successfully did it and the game was over in 20 minutes and it advertises 45 minutes on the box and I know somebody who's taken 45 minutes to play the game because they were playing it in a big group and they were really discussing it and they were really getting into the story there's not that much there um, I'm not planning to do a review video of this game but if you want to go and watch one go and watch Tom Vassell from the Dice Tower watch his review you know photoshop him out and replace him with me because I would basically say almost exactly the same thing as Tom said uh, you know the game just didn't work for me at all and I've tried two of them so anyway moving on let's get to get to better games Sierra West I say better games better games that I am doing a review of this month so this month it sounds like I'm doing lots of reviews I'm only doing two I'm doing Ragusa and Sierra West so my initial impression of Sierra West spoiler really enjoy it I will go into a lot more detail when I do the review I have played it three times so far. I've played three of the different modules. I want to play the fourth module, and I also want to play a solo game of it. And once I've done that, I will be doing a review of it. Um, I haven't played it at two player as well, so probably I want to play two player module number four, and then I want to play the solo game. Or I, could, I guess I could solo module four, we'll see. And then I'm going to be doing a review of it. So initial impression's good. I know a lot of people that have played Sierra West and say it's really good, so I went into it expecting it to be good and I really do like the core card play mechanism within the game that is really good but as I say there'll be more coming in a review later on next up uh, a game which I am fighting an addiction to and I'm successfully managing to do that basically because I've been working 15 hour days this week and I haven't had any time to play it so <laughs> the addiction has kind of worn off a little bit and that is the Pathfinder Adventure card game and for anybody who hasn't watched any of my videos or followed any of my content for the last six or nine months and he's tuning in now and going oh yeah we know Paul he's a medium to heavy Euro gamer he doesn't like random elements in games hang on a minute Pathfinder adventure card game isn't that game like completely random with loads of dice rolling and yes it is and I'm really enjoying it despite the fact that it's random with lots of dice rolls in it I have played it four times no in fact I've played it more I've played it seven times because I played it a few times at Gen Con the last four times I've played it I have live streamed every single one. So there are four videos on my channel of me playing through uh, four games of it. Uh, three of them have been solo. Um, one of them was with uh, Rick and Andy that came round one Wednesday night after we'd done the Copenhagen video and we did the Pathfinder. So I've basically got a party of three adventurers, three adventurers, um, and sometimes I'm playing all three myself and sometimes other people are joining me to play those three. Again, I'm not planning a review of this game at the moment. I'm putting it up to my patrons to vote on, but it's never getting enough votes, so it's probably not going to get a full review. So I'll, I'll basically, I'll use this opportunity to tell you what I think. I'm loving it. It's very, very random, right? E extremely random. And I'm loving it, but I'm not saying it's the best game ever. I'm loving it because I just am. I'm, I'm enjoying playing it, despite the, the big problems that I have with the game, which... I had with the original version of the game. You roll a whole bunch of dice, okay? And you'll be doing a skill check and you might need a 13 and you've got like a D12 plus two and then you add on another D6 and then you add on another D4 and you go, oh yeah, okay. So the average of my dice roll here is gonna be like an 18. And if you wanna do the percentage chance, you might say, there's like a 96% chance I'm gonna do this. And then you roll your dice and you get one, one, two, one. And you failed. Oh, and you failed by lots. Oh, and you take six damage. Oh, and you lose all the cards in your hand. And suddenly on one, one die roll, because you got the extreme, I mean, all die rolls have a bell curve, um, and because you got the extreme, that does happen, it's rare, but it does happen, it's actually screwed the game up. It's screwed the game up as in, you've not got the outcome that you should have got done. But like the Arkham Horror Living card game, when that tentacle comes out at just the wrong time, and I would never accept that level of randomness in any, any competitive game. But in a, in a cooperative game, it's like, okay, that happened. That's there. The other thing that I really don't like about it is it doesn't feel like D&D. &D. 
in a lot of ways, although in a lot of ways it does. The monsters and the treasure are not linked together. In D&D, you fight a monster and it's got treasure. In this, the monster is a separate card to the treasure. So you find a monster and you have to fight it, but there's no reward for killing it at all, apart from it's gone. And then the next card will be, oh, it's a trap or whatever. Right, so you, right. And then the next card will be just a, a magic sword lying around in the middle of nowhere. And you've got to roll the dice to see whether you can pick it up or not. Every card that you encounter is basically draw a card, make some kind of check, whether it be a combat check or a dexterity check or whatever, to see whether the card disappears or whether you get the card. And that's essentially it. All you're doing is you're going through the cards. But I'm liking it because there's so much to think about. And if you watch any of the playthroughs, you will see the amount of decisions that you have to make because certain things combo together. And I like that. I like that decision process. And despite all of the randomness, there are definite decisions that you can make, where to go, who supports, who, when. I love a lot of the mechanisms in the game, as I say, despite the randomness. Anyway, Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. I want to be doing a lot more. Um, the core set comes with a campaign, which is three chapters. I think they're called chapters? Adventures? Adventures. Um, each one's made up of three scenarios, and I'm on, I'm about to start scenario three of nine. Because if you play a scenario and you fail it, you have to redo it, which is a bit old school. Again, I like the Arkham Horror one, where the story carries on regardless, but it isn't that. Um, anyway, Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, go and watch one of my streams if you're interested. Next up, Deep Blue. And I can't talk much about this because it's the 15th of September and there is an embargo on information about it. Asmodee, thankfully, uh, well, no, thankfully not. Thank you very much to Asmodee is what I'm trying to say for sending me an early copy of Deep Blue. But because there's an embargo on information going out about it, I'm not allowed to give you my opinion on the game. What I can tell you is that there is a live playthrough on my channel. They allowed me to do a live playthrough of this. So I taught, um, who was there? Emily was there? Paul was there. Yeah, me, other Paul, and Emily, and we played through a three-play game. I taught them how to play, and then we played it. And Asmodee gave me permission to basically put that video out there, because we're not giving any thoughts or opinions on the game. We're just, we're just showing it happening. So if you're interested in finding out information about Deep Blue, and not my opinion about it, but actual, you know, a playthrough, then you can go and check that out on the channel, and give me a couple of weeks, and then I'll be allowed to tell you what I think about it. Next up is Irish Gage. Is this in the right order? I think it is. Irish Gage, right. I only did this two days ago. Two days ago, so on Friday the 13th. Oh, it was Friday the 13th. I didn't realize that. Anyway, I can blame that for why I didn't win. Um, no, I did win. Yeah, forget that, right. Friday the 13th, Irish Gage. Sound like a broken record here, but there's a video on my channel of us playing it. <laughs> now that I can do live streaming, I'm just live streaming everything. Um, so yeah, I, we basically did a tutorial and playthrough of Irish Gage on Friday night. Um, my initial impressions of the game, I'm not sure. I mean, I like the game. I like the, the fact that the, the rules are relatively simple and you have these, uh, you know, it's a very, very streamlined 18xx game in that you're buying shares in the different companies um, and then you're building routes and I like train building and I like route building. Um, but our first game, we had an, an odd thing happen. I don't know if that's normal, and it could be because it was our first game, and we all want to play it again. But me and Tom got a good start from like turn one, and we tied for the victory on 113, uh, and Mark and Paul didn't get a good start and ended the game on 56 and 58 or whatever. The difference in scores was massive. And we need to play it again to see, well, okay, what did we do on turn one that they didn't do, and could they have done that? And if, if it was just we randomly got a good start and they randomly didn't get a good start, I don't know, as I say, I need to play it again. I need to go back, have a look at it and play it again. But what I did is I basically um, got shares in a company, built a little bit of track, paid out dividends, the cubes came out, the companies that I had shares in paid me some money, which means I was ahead on the money, which means I bought another share, which means the next time dividends paid out, I got more money, and I just did that, and I just kept paying dividends out for the whole game. Tom had a more interesting game. Tom was building routes and doing other stuff. Um, and it, yeah, as I say, one game, and we were all learning how to play. So my initial impressions might be completely wrong. Want to play it more, but if you want to see that playthrough, that's on the channel now. On that same evening, we played Sierra West, which I've already talked about, and then we played North American Railways. And I posted this on social media. 
This is a brilliant game. It was the best game I played that night. And I'm not saying that Sierra West and Irish Gage aren't good, but North American Railways, I've only played it three times and it's fantastic. Um, it's just such, uh, a, yeah, I mean, not super simple, but the rules are fairly, fairly simple. But the depth of decisions and the depth of the, the way that you set up the cards, the initial setup, it's just really, really good. I think it's a hidden gem. I think it's a criminally underrated game. I don't think it's widely available, but it's really, really good. Um, so there you go. I'm not doing a review of it, but I am telling you that it's really good. Uh, and I'd like to do a, a playthrough of it uh, at some point. Yeah, North American Railways definitely got my seal of approval. Next up is Amul, A-M-U-L, which is from Lauter Pellet and Stronghold Games. Uh, I believe this is out already. Not 100% sure, but I think it is out already. And this is an interesting game. I am doing a video on this game in October. 11th of October, I have got an evening booked out where some people are coming around and I'm going to be doing a live tutorial and a playthrough of that video. And it's going to be a commission video. So, you know, I'm at the stage now where oh, if I say it's a good game, am I just saying it's a good game because Lauter Pellet have agreed to sponsor me to do a video on the game? And if I say, oh, it's a terrible game, Lighter Pellet are going to be like, Paul, we don't want you to do that video anymore because you've told people you don't like it. Um, so, it, you know, I'll tell you now, I like it, right? I'm going to break my own rules again. I've played it twice and it's just really good. I describe it as Seven Wonders, but nothing like Seven Wonders because it, <laughs> it has a Seven Wonders feel to it. It plays three to eight players. It's cards, but you're not drafting the cards. That's the big difference. You're not drafting the cards. You have a hand of cards, and you have six, and then you choose one of those cards to put face down into the market. And then in player order, starting with the current player and going clockwise, everybody takes a card from the market. So it kind of has card drafting in there, in a way that you're putting a card in, and then everybody takes a card out of the market, and you could take out the thing you put in. And then after you've done that, everybody then chooses a card from their hand and plays it which could be the one that you just picked up from the market, or it could be one that you had in your hand earlier. And that repeats for nine rounds. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's the basic core mechanism. And it's just really good. And I think Amul is going to be one that is missed. I think it's going to be a hidden gem. I, I'm not hearing that many people talking about it, um, but it, it, it's very good. So check that out. And uh, if you can wait till the 11th of October, I'll be doing a live stream video of me playing it. Right, next up. Watergate, I've already mentioned that. Why have I got it on the list twice? Next up, Quartermaster General, 1914. Now, I've played the original Quartermaster General once uh, a few years ago when I think it was the only Quartermaster General game around. I liked it. It was like World War One, was it? Two? Um, in an hour, six player. Uh, kind of like Axes and Allies, but streamlined and cut down to an hour. It's not like Axes and Allies, really. It's card driven. Um, I remember enjoying it, but it, it was okay. Quartermaster General 1914, played yesterday, fantastic. Really, really good. It's a five player game, although we played it with six because we had two people playing the Germans together, uh, which worked quite well. The mechanisms in the game are great. It's card driven, but you have this thing called attrition. So as the game goes on, your cards run out and then you start losing points. And we, we I, I was playing France and we actually lost Paris. And Michele, who was playing Russia, was like, oh, the game's over, we've lost Paris, we can't win from this. And you're right, when you lose your, your home territory, you then can't, nothing's supplied, so you can't do anything. I had to wait. Three turns later, the British came in. The British liberated France, uh, kicked the Germans out. This is 1914. Um, and then I was able to rebuild in there, and then we did a counterattack at that point. We'd been using attrition to get the Germans' cards down. And at that point, Germany just couldn't, couldn't respond, got knocked back, and then the game was over and we won by two points. It was so close. It was a really, really good game. Quartermaster General 1914, PSC Games, I think it is, yeah. Next up, what did I play yesterday? Point Salad. I've got that on the list. I think I've played that once before. I definitely played it once before, but I can't remember when. Point Salad is a fun little 15, 20 minute game that is a point salad. Um, it is so simple. The rules are, you know, what, two sides of a small A5 piece of paper or something like that? Uh, maybe more, but it, it, it's just a really simple game. Um, and it's actually quite good fun. You're set collecting, but the cards have got two sides and you either take a card as a scoring card and that tells you how your other cards score. 
but it's clever in the way that you can manipulate which scoring cards are available. You can remove ones that are going to be awesome for other people and get them out of the game, or you can take them yourself and then flip them over later on. It's just a good, fun, it's a filler game, uh, but it's a good one. So I, I, I very much enjoy that. The other game that is on my list is Terraforming Mars. Um, and I'm sad to say that my 100% win record is now broken because I've now played it twice and I didn't win yesterday. Terraforming Mars is one of those games that I don't want to like because everybody else loves it. And a part of me is like, well, I don't want to just jump on that bandwagon and, 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 and absolutely love it like so many other people do. And there's things about the game I remember when it came out, people went, oh, the attack cards are horrible. Don't play with them, they ruin the game. And then other people are like, no, what are you on about? They're fine. Um, my personal opinion is that some of them are fine. Some of them are horrible. There's a couple of cards in there that I would not want to play with. And thankfully yesterday, the group that I was with yesterday, whenever that card came up, did nobody bought it. Because it was just, in a five player game, you've got a card that hurts you and one other player. Nah, nah, don't like that. But overall, Terraform Mars, I think is a great game. It just is really, really good. And one of the great things about Terraform Mars is you're doing your thing, you're building your engine, you're, you're actually doing stuff. And then you tot up the points at the end of the game and you've come last. Don't matter. You've still felt that you've actually done something. The way the cards come out, um, you know, I, I mean, we drafted them. We, we drafted the, we did a selective mulligan on the initial 10 because there was a new player. So I felt that drafting the initial 10 cards would have been overwhelming for him and given too much of, a, too much of an advantage to the experienced players. So we did a selective mulligan on the first 10 and then we drafted the other four. Um, so yeah, you, you have quite a bit of control over the cards that you get but because every card is unique, the cards are very good thematically. I just really like the game. Um, I haven't played it anywhere near as much as most other people, but that's Terraforming Mars. Very good. So that's all the games I've played. Mostly good. One I'm not allowed to talk about, one I really didn't like, and a couple of them that I'm doing reviews of where I'll tell you more later on. Right, content that I have made this month. I have done a lot of live streaming. Since I've got the live streaming system up, um, I've done loads. Uh, let's talk about the live streaming first. So, Ragusa, I did the live unboxing, Paul learns how to play the game from the rulebook and then plays it. Uh, I did Reavers of Midgard, where I taught two people how to play the game and then we played it. I've done the four sessions of Pathfinder Adventure card game. Uh, I did my live Q&A this month, that was fun. Um, we did a Sierra West, the Sierra West video, I forgot to mention this earlier. We did module one and that was a learn to play the game from the rulebook. And I did highlight some rulebook issues in that video. Overall, it's okay, but there was a few bits that, yeah, weren't, weren't that great. Um, but I did one of those. I've done a review of Reavers. Oh, yeah, another thing that I've done. I did five videos covering the new Lord of the Rings adventure card game on the PC. So why is Paul covering video games? Well, it's the Lord of the Rings adventure card game. It was originally going to be based, I think, on the Lord of the Rings living card game. And I think that's what it was originally advertised as. But it's not the living card game. It's more like the uh, Warhammer Quest adventure card game, which then became Heroes of Terranoth. This is the Lord of the Rings adventure card game. It uses a lot of very similar mechanisms. Um, and I really like that in physical form. So why wouldn't I like it in computer form? And they've done a brilliant job. So I have done five videos covering all five parts of the tutorial. Um, and it's basically, Paul loads up the game. And this is my first look. I, I didn't load the game up at all. Well, I did, just to make sure it worked. Um, but I didn't, I didn't load anything. So there are five videos that I live streamed that are on my channel right now of me going through the tutorials one at a time. Initial impressions, really good, and I want to do more of it. Deep Blue, I've mentioned that, and I can't talk about uh, my opinions. Irish Gage, I've mentioned that. That video's up there. And I think that's it. I think that's it for the content that I've made this month. Oh, in terms of live streaming, right. The other thing that has gone live on my channel in the last week, and this is why I've been so busy, I've done two how to play videos. For those people that have been following me, you will know that my last actual how to play video, where it's just me teaching you how to play the game with proper filmed bits and edited, was December 2018. And there's lots of reasons why I kind of soft quit doing them, um, which I won't go into here. But if you ever want to know, buy me a drink and I might tell you. Um, drink of milk, that is, because I don't really drink anymore. Um, but I've done two. Um, how to play Letter Jam, the new game from CGE, which is out very soon. 
Uh, so if you want to learn how to play Letter Jam, the official how to play video from somebody who's demoed it 150 times is there on the channel right now. That was a relatively easy video for me to make because I, I already knew how to play the game. Um, and how to play Key Market. Now I'd already done a tutorial and playthrough video of Key Market, but it was a stretch goal of the Key Market, uh, this is second edition Key Market, it was a stretch goal of the, uh, the Kickstarter version of the game. Um, that I would do an actual how to play video for it as well. I had forgotten how to play, I had to go back and remind myself how to play that live on the channel now. So if you've got Key Market coming to you, and I believe it is being delivered pretty much around now, then go onto YouTube, find my channel, and in 23 minutes I will teach you how to play Key Market 2nd Edition, um, which is a game I really want to play again, because I did enjoy it. Right, next, plans for this month. And, well, plans for the next few weeks. Right. Roman Roll is going on Kickstarter at some point soonish. I've done the video for it. The video is done. It's ready to go as soon as um, PSC Games let me release that to the wild. I will be doing it, but the video is done. I'm working on the rulebook, so I'm finishing off the rulebook. Thanks to David who's helping me out with that one. I've also been doing a lot of work on Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood. This is a massive, massive game. It's a cross between Gloomhaven and Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, I'm doing three videos on it. I'm doing the rulebook, and I'm also doing quite a bit of game development uh, with the designer on it. So I am heavily involved in this game. Um, the first of the videos is, is done. I'm working on the second video right now, and then I'll be doing the third video soon. I will release them when the publisher lets me release them. What else am I doing? Madeira. The Madeira is going on Kickstarter very, very soon. Um, I am working, I'm going to be helping out with the rulebook for the expansions and I'm going to be doing, uh, um, I've done two videos, I'm doing two videos, one's done. I did a tutorial and playthrough video months ago, like February, March time, because this Kickstarter was going to be going live a long time ago. So the video's done and he's just waiting to go live. Uh, and we'll release it ready for the campaign. I'm also going to be doing another video covering what's new in this expansion, and I'm hoping to get that done this week. Uh, next week, well, sorry, the week after, yeah, anyway. Chocolate Factory. Uh, Chocolate Factory is a game from um, Alley Cat Games. I helped out with the rulebook for it, and I will be doing another how to play video, and that will be done hopefully by the end of this month. Um, that is being delivered to backers at some point soonish as well. So I want to get that video done before backers get it. And then at the end of the month, I'm off to Tabletop Gaming Live in London. If you are at Tabletop Gaming Live in London, please come by and say hello. CG, I will be working for CGE, Czech Games Edition, but we don't have a booth there. So if you go around looking for the CGE booth, you won't find me. I will be in the Asmodee demo area. Asmodee have two demo areas, one for all the Fantasy Flight stuff and another one for all the other stuff. I will have two tables in the other stuff area, uh, and me and Phil will be demoing Letter Jam and Sanctum all Saturday and all Sunday. And on the Saturday night, I'm having a meetup. If you want to come out for a meal, drop me a message. Um, it's on the Slack channel, so if you're on the Slack channel, talk about it there. If you're not on the Slack channel and you are a patron supporter, please get in contact with me uh, because we're booking a table and we need to know how many places are going to be there, um, how many people are going to be there. So that's Saturday night, we're going out for an Italian and then obviously a chat. What else do I want to do? I want to do more Pathfinder Adventure card game, but my workload at the moment is too high. I want to do more Lord of the Rings stuff, uh, but I haven't got time for that. Right, going on to the Patreon. Patreon was a very good month. Thank you so much to everybody who has started supporting me in the last month. And like always, I'm saying this on the 15th of September, and, 15th of Se um, and September right now has not been a good month. So I'm saying this with all this positivity that August was a brilliant month and I got lots, lots of new supporters on Patreon. And since the turn of the month, lots of people have, have, have left for, you know, for, for lots of different reasons. But right now, September is looking like it's, a, it's going to be a bad month. But let's focus on the positive. Um, some new executive producers. Thank you very much to Barry Oldsworth, a uh, new executive producer came on board. Matthew and Hannah Ania, uh, who are based down in the southwest as well, they're in Cornwall. Thank you very much for your support. Hannah actually won the competition that I did um, when I was over in Gen Con, where I did my daily diaries and I gave a letter a day and they made a word uh, and Hannah won that competition. So Hannah has a copy of Letter Jam. Uh, she's one of the few people in the country that has a copy of Letter Jam. Also, uh, Yong Hoon Lee, thank you very much for your support. You've been at, at executive supporter level as well. 
A couple of special mentions to Tom Wakefield. Thank you very much, Tom. Tom increased his pledge because I was $1 short of hitting my next goal on the Patreon campaign. So Tom increased his pledge by $1 to allow me to hit that goal. Thank you very much, Tom. That goal is for me to do a video of Mage Knight where I will be teaching people how to play and we're gonna live stream it. Uh, and I'm planning that at some point, but if September carries on like it is, I'm actually gonna dip below that level. But I, st I still wanna do it and I'm hoping that things pick up later this month. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but I'm planning that roughly for November time. Uh, and Christine Wright, you've upped your pledge as well, uh, beyond the executive producer pledge, pledge. There isn't anything beyond executive producer, but it's just, yeah, thank you very much for your increased support. Um, right, other producers that have joined in. Adam Kranzel, thank you very much, Adam. Alex Kelly, uh, Alan Nordahl, if I've pronounced that correctly, Nordahl, I think I have. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, Bruce Spears, thank you very much, Bruce, who joined in your first live uh, session. I think it was Irish Gage. I think you joined in on that one. Uh, Gemma Bridges, thank you very much, Gemma, and I'm glad you've managed to get a ticket for GridCon. I'll talk about GridCon in a minute. James Kenny, thank you very much, James. Um, spent quite a lot of time with James at HandyCon, and then James was going on holiday afterwards, and I was really worried that I gave him the lurgy because I was patient zero at HandyCon, and I gave everybody uh, an illness. Thankfully, James didn't get it. Whew. <laughs> my guilt would have been incredible um jennifer wallace thank you very much jennifer um oh can i pronounce this one uh junta slash cult there you go thank you very much i might have got that right mandy willard thank you very much mandy uh mason coltrane yeah mason coltrane i think thank you very much mason uh matt mcintyre thank you very much matt michael m thank you very much michael uh mike andrews Sebastian Bergman, thank you very much, Sebastian. Uh, Simon Milburn, thank you very much. That is all of the new producers. Uh, a few people have backed at a lower level this month. Um, Crystal Pisano, thank you very much, Crystal. Always like engaging with you on social media. Uh, Francisco Carranza, Carranza uh, Gary Braddock, and Una. Thank you very much to all of you for supporting me this month. Now, every month I do a giveaway on the Patreon campaign, and this month's giveaway was... This. Right, Vital Lacerda's Escape Plan Deluxe Edition with the extra add-on pack and everything else. Really heavy game. Don't know what this was valued at. Quite expensive, but I'm giving one away. Um, and I did the draw. And I, and I, and I said, when I, when I announced this last month, I said, I really hope somebody in the UK wins this because I really don't want to have to ship this overseas. And then I did the draw, and I'm happy to say the winner is Mara Johannes. Thank you very much, Mara, for all of your support. Uh, since your time with me. Mara is not in the UK. <laughs> Mara is based uh, over in America. Mara used to work for AEG, which is how I, I, I got to know her. Um, and we've stayed friends, we've stayed in touch, and she's been supporting uh, my Patreon ever since. And Mara has won this. I don't know how yet I'm going to get it to you, but we will work that out somehow. Uh, if you're happy to wait, I will bring it across to the States next time I come across. But yes, there you go. Congratulations, Mara. Now, Moving on to this month's contest. I said this one was a big contest and this is a big game, right? This month's contest might be even bigger. Thank you very much to Shadowborn Games. Shadowborn Games are the publisher who create Oathsworn, which is the game I mentioned earlier on that I'm working on. And this is a massive game. And basically Jamie from Shadowborn Games has said that one person who supports me on Patreon this month will win a free standee pledge for Oathsworn. But if you want to, you can upgrade it to the minis pledge by paying the difference. I think that's how this is going to work. If you are supporting me on Patreon at producer level or higher, you automatically get entered into the contest. You don't need to do anything. But if you're watching this video and you think, oh yeah, I quite like Paul. I quite like the stuff that he makes. Either one of those two is good or both. Um, and you, you want to be in with a shout of winning it, then this is the month to start supporting me. Um, basically, if you're a producer level, you get one entry. If you're an executive producer, you get three entries. That's how it works. I will be doing the draw on the 1st of October or the 2nd of October, whenever, something like that, um, because Patreon takes its money on the 1st of the month. So basically, you have 15 days. Yeah, I think you've got 15 days. If you support me by the end of this month, you will automatically get entered into the draw. And one lucky person is going to win uh, a free standee, a standee pledge for Oathsworn into the Deep Wood. I keep wanting to say Journeys into the Deep Wood because that's the Lord of the Rings game, um, which is another game that I want to be playing a lot more of. Right, anyway, thank you very much to Shadowborn Games for supporting the show. Um, and yeah, now you, if you win, you're not going to get it 
because this game is going on Kickstarter. You'll just you'll just get a pledge of it, and then when it gets delivered, it'll get delivered. Um, I think that's everything. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody who who supported me. Um, is there anything I haven't mentioned? Yeah, I'm getting a copy of Tainted Grail probably next week. Let's talk about that later. Um, I'm going to be doing a video. I have agreed uh, with the publishers to do the official how to play video of Tainted Grail. I am super excited about it because I don't buy games on Kickstarter, really. The last game I backed on Kickstarter, the last big game I backed on Kickstarter was Gloomhaven three years ago. I've backed Tainted Grail. I was a backer of Tainted Grail. That's how much I was excited about the game and looking forward to it. And now it turns out I'm going to be working on it. So that, that's really cool. Anyway, I'm not going to be doing that Phil, for another like three months or so, but they wanted to get me a copy of it early so that I could basically brag about it to everybody else. Um, no, it's so that I can start playing it, learning it, getting used to it, all in preparation for me creating videos on it, probably at the start of next year. Um, oh, and Vital has also sent me the rule book for the new Kanban edition, which I'm going to be working on at some point. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a lot of work booked up for the next six months. I won't go into all of it here because there's too much of it. But the more and more I think about it, the more I panic. Anyway, I think that's it. Thank you very much, as always, to everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Don't ask me anything about Deep Blue until the 23rd of September. Uh, because I think that's the embargo date, that's when it's lifted, and then I can tell you what I think about it. Um, other than that, I'm going to wrap things up here because it is really warm. It's the 15th of September in England, and the weather is like it's the middle of July or something crazy. Um, I don't know what's going on in the world, but yeah, really nice weather in September. Uh, we're off out later today. We're going to Barnstable. We're doing an escape room, then we're going for a curry, and then we're going to go and see John Fiddemore uh, in a live show. So today's going to be a long day, um, but it's going to be really good. I'm going to head upstairs now and get this edited, hopefully out later today. Um, and then get on with some more work next week. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com